Today I want to quickly go through how to troubleshoot RS-232. You'll need a serial cable on the ACR-9000 or the 9600 that aries through the Gemini or the 6K. Our uh, null modem crossover cable is a 71-016939-10. For the Compax 3, it's the green SSK1-02. The VIX has a slightly different pinout, and I'll come back to that in a minute. Its part number is VIX RS-232. Dash 08. There's also a dash 16 for a 16 foot long. You'll need a jumper wire, or in this situation, I'm, I'm going to use a paper clip. Three, you'll need a PC with the software loaded. I'm going to use Aries support tool that has a simple terminal emulator on there. You could also use Motion Planner or uh, the ACR view. Number four, uh, the PCs without a COM port, without a 9 pin COM port. A USB to RS-232 adapter. We recommend using the Cables Unlimited USB 2920. It has the FTDI chipset in there. It is available at Amazon.com. Even though USB is a standard, not all the chips are manufactured to the same quality standards. If your, your adapter does not have the FTDI chipset, it may or may not work with our products. Our software is a free download on our website. Go to www.parkermotion.com, click on supports and downloads, and download product software. On the 9 pin COM ports, on the output of a PC, pin number 2 is the RX, pin number 3 is the TX, those are the receive and the transmit, and then pin 5 is the ground. Connecting to the product, the RX goes to the TX, the, so the receive is connected to the transmit. The transmit, which is pin number three, gets connected to RX, which is the receive on the product, and then the pin number five goes to the ground on the product. It may be labeled as a DC common. Really old PCs had a 25 pin COM port. It has slightly different pinout on there. Those go back to Windows 2000 and before, typically. What we're going to do is uh, what's considered a loopback test. So you're going to jumper the receive and the transmit lines. So everything going down the transmit line is going to come back on the receive line. On the end of the 9-pin cables commonly is the numbers printed, but sometimes they're very difficult to read. On a mail connector, uh, the pins 2 and 3 are going to be uh, towards the left-hand side. Uh, on the top and then on the uh, female side it'll be two and three towards the right hand side I just put that as a reference because sometimes those are very difficult to read on the VIX pinout is uh, slightly different than uh, two three and five and so if you jump her pins four and five together that will be the loop back test let's first confirm the COM port numbers so go into your start menu go into your control panel go into hardware and sound, go into your device manager, under ports you should see the COM port number, the USB to serial adapters will be listed as well too. Those commonly will come up as different COM numbers if you um, right click go to properties you can see the manufacturer of the chipset used within the adapters. We recommend using an adapter with the FTDI chipset. They work on both Windows XP and Windows 7 with all of our products. If your adapter does not have an FTDI chipset or may or may not work, the Prolific chipset will work on XP. It does not work on Windows 7. There are several other device manufacturers with different chipsets um, we have not gone through and cannot go through the entire marketplace and test all the different manufacturers you can try going to their website and updating the device drivers if you're not able to establish communications uh, the best choice would be to purchase the USB 2920 with the FTDI chipset. If you click on the port settings, this will be set based on the software. You do not need to change it. 
click on advanced and then you can see the COM number you may want to change that if it's a really high COM number it may or may not work so you can see which ones are being used and which ones are available so you can reassign that sometimes when you change that and press OK you will need to reboot your computer I'm already set to COM1 so I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here you can just change that and press OK and go ahead and close out of the device manager so now that you've confirmed the COM port number in the device manager you can go ahead and go into the start menu go into the area support tool software under the communications select the COM number then select terminal emulator I'm not talking to an Aries drive I'm just doing this as a loopback test so I'm just going to use the Aries support tool software to confirm that I have control of the COM port my COM number is correct and that I can transmit and receive with a loopback test so in the terminal window if you type with nothing connected at the end of your cable without the jumper if you type ASDF anything on the keyboard you will notice that you can see what you're typing before you press enter that means this software is actually echoing up locally so it does not actually transmit until you press the enter key so now that's important to understand so when you connect the jumper at the end of the cable then if you type ASDF and press enter it should come back so if you type 1 and press enter you will see it come back to you a second time because you're echoing it locally then you're transmitting it and with the loop back it's coming back on the receive line the motion planner software in binary mode which is used on the Gemini GV and GT echoes locally all the other products with motion planner the GT6 GV6 in ASCII mode the Gemini 6k and the 6k controllers there is no local echo on there so the loopback you only see what you're typing if the loopback is successful Now if the loopback is successful but you're not able to connect to the product, double check that your cable isn't a straight through cable. A straight through cable is 2 to 2, 3 to 3, but if you jumper 2 and 3 together, the loopback will be successful. So ohm out the cable, make sure 2 is going to 3, 3 is going to 2, and 5 is going to 5. If the loopback is not successful, double check that you don't have a short to ground or a bad solder joint. Could also be that the COM port is not fully seated. Uh, commonly the USB adapters and the cables, the, the thread connectors are either the wrong genders or they're fully missing so they're not fully seated. So make sure that they are aligned properly and that they haven't come loose. Lastly, replace the cable on the RS-232 and 45 interface on the Compax 3 that uses the green serial SSK1-02 cable you'll notice in the documentation though pin number one needs to be zero volts on power up for RS-232 if pin number one is connected to anything um, it will come up in 45 mode and you won't be able to con connect through your PC you'll notice that pin number one on our SSK1-02 is not populated at all for this reason. If you're using a straight through cable and a gender bender, um, the straight through cables typically do have that pin populated and the gender changer will pass that through and commonly on power up the drive will come up in 45 mode. So the easiest way to do that is take a pair of wire snips and actually snip that pin out either on the gender changer or on the cable itself and then cycle power on the 24 volts on the Compax 3 for it to wake up in 232 mode. So that is how you 
quickly confirm the PC's RS-232 communication is working.